Welcome to module four, the mind of your dog, helping your dog's mental health. So in this module, we're gonna be talking about mental stimulation. We're gonna be talking about circadian rhythms and how important those are for your dog's health. Also the crucial importance of exercise and then the different forms of stress in your dog's life and how they can take shape and what you can do about them. So it's really important for your dog to have a healthy mental state. If you feed them the best diet you possibly can, that's really great. But it's also important that they have a really healthy mind and a happy life. So what does that look like? What does it mean? Uh, it means regular breed appropriate exercise. So some dog breeds are meant for long days working on the farm. Some do dog breeds uh, were bred to pull sleds. Other dog breeds are toy breeds that were companions uh, for queens and kings and castles. So looking at the breed and looking at what their history had them doing and making sure the exercise that you implement is appropriate for them. Honoring your dog's circadian rhythm is extremely important. We'll get into what that means and how a dog's hormones are produced and what happens when a dog has to keep up with our modern lifestyle and misses out on those uh, circadian rhythms. Social engagement is really important for your dog. That can mean dog friends. Uh, at a play place or a dog park. And also it can just mean you. You are your dog's companion and you are a big part of your dog's social life. So how can you keep that balanced and keep your dog happy? And then finally, mental stimulation. So making sure that your dog is using his brain and developing his brain and watching how happy that can make a dog feel. Okay, so the importance of exercise. Augie uh, in 2020 broke the world record for the oldest golden retriever at the age of 20. She's the 19th oldest dog ever and she lived to be 20 years and 11 months passing away in spring of 2021. But one of Augie's favorite pastimes was swimming, chasing a ball into the swimming pool and she swam at least an hour every day. Then we are looking back and remembering Maggie, the Australian Kelpie who lived on the sheep farm and lived to be 30 years old, running three miles a day, uh, following her owner around on the tractor. Bramble, uh, owned by um, Anne Heritage, is walked for several hours a day and he is 25 years old. And then finally in Mongolia, there's a breed of dog called Banker Dogs and they live a nomadic life and have really strenuous jobs uh, working the land, protecting livestock. And that breed of dog, many of those dogs in Mongolia, have a life expectancy of more than 18 years. So the one thing all of these long-lived dogs have in common is plenty of daily rigorous exercise. What are the beneficial effects of exercise? Well, for dogs, they're really similar to the benefits that we see in people. Uh, exercise reduces fearfulness and anxiety. It decreases reactivity and increases good behavior. So the more exercise your dog gets, the more he's going to be obedient and um, happy to follow your instructions. You're going to see a reduction in uh, boredom-induced problems like excessive barking, destructive chewing, jumping on people, those are all exacerbated when a dog isn't getting enough exercise. Regular exercise also promotes healthy lymphatic flow and boosts the immune system. The lymphatic system doesn't have a pump, like the circulatory system has the heart to pump. The lymph system has to rely on movement and exercise for lymph to move around the body. And that's so important if your dog, especially is dealing with cancer, lymph flow is a really crucial part of making sure that your dog is comfortable when dealing with cancer. Regular exercise lowers the risk of obesity and being overweight, and therefore it can help prevent joint disease. Obesity can contribute um, 
due to the excess weight to the formation of joint disease and how bad the joint disease is. And also it can help to prevent heart disease. Of course, regular exercise maintains strong muscles and is really important for joint health and mobility. So if your dog has arthritis, letting them lay around the house is not the most beneficial thing for them. Keeping their muscle tone strong and keeping their joint mobility active is really important. Uh, exercise also helps to normalize and regulate the digestive system. So if your dog is dealing with chronic GI issues, exercise, regular exercise, uh, especially walking is really beneficial to any sort of GI issues. Exercise boosts the production of glutathione in the body, so it helps to detoxify. And even a 10 minute walk before or after feeding your dog his meal can help to manage blood sugar and the effects of insulin on his system. So there are numerous benefits to regular exercise. The more hyperactive and excitable your dog is, the more he needs to move. So dogs with anxiety and stress are able to bring their hormones back into balance with rigorous cardiovascular exercise. So the more neurotic your dog seems to be, the more exercise he needs. And again, this can be breed specific. Certain breeds um, have a higher tolerance for more exercise than other breeds. So listen to your dog and watch his activity levels. If he seems hyperactive, he's not getting enough exercise on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so how much, how often? Dogs should get a bare bones minimum of 20 minutes of sustained heart thumping exercise three times a week just to maintain their muscles and prevent atrophy. Most dogs can benefit from longer. More frequent sessions, of course, are better. 30 minutes to an hour is better than 20 minutes, and six or seven days a week is better than three days a week. Regular exercise also helps to build your dog's confidence and trust while improving his ability to remain calm. So there's that wonderful paradox that the more activity he gets, the more calm he is able to be. And chances are your dog lies around all day waiting for you to get home from work. And therefore his tendons and muscles and ligaments are also lying around all day. You might have time for like a 20 minute stroll when you get home from work most days of the week. But then to take him out for a three or five hour hike on the weekend is going to put him at risk for injury because his body is not in shape. He's not conditioned for that kind of exercise. So. If you want to do weekend adventures, try to fit a more rigorous daily exercise schedule in for your dog. You know, having a sedentary week and then doing everything on the weekends is not a balanced exercise plan. So just like us, our dogs need reasons to get physically active. Just having the biggest backyard in the world and a fun buddy hanging out there with him is not enough to ensure your dog is getting enough exercise. So you have to provide the motivation and companionship that your dog needs in order to stay in good physical and mental condition. So a variety of exercise ideas can be fun for both people and dogs. I really love going for walks. I find them relaxing. I like that kind of exercise. So my dogs go on a daily walk for me. We do have different paths that we take and the walks can vary in length but we do do some sort of walk every day a lot of people enjoy, enjoy agility which is uh, that sport where dogs are going over obstacles and it's kind of a combination of um, obedience and training and um, aerobic exercise and many many different breeds of dogs really enjoy agility it gives them a sense of purpose and it helps to build a closer bond between you and your, whole, your, your uh, dog. Uh, bicycling can be fun and they make special harnesses that attach safely to the bicycle so that your dog can be trained to jog alongside while you go cycling. Brain games are rather new and there's so many to choose from. You can 
Google this and look it up, but there's stimulating kind of brain puzzles that you can get for your dog where you maybe hide treats inside of a toy and they figure out how to get it out. Uh, you can also invent your own brain games. We used to play uh, with our hound mix when he was young by having one person hold him in the yard and wait and then me or one of the kids would run and go hide and we would let him use his talented nose being a hound to go and find whoever was hiding and we would reward him with a handful of treats when he got there and it was so much fun trying to find places to hide from him because his nose was so great he pretty much found us wherever we could try to uh, cover ourselves up or, or squish ourselves into a tiny spot. Chasing ball is a favorite for a lot of dogs, especially retrieving breeds. It's kind of instinctive in there and it gives you a break from having to walk or run much with them. Hikes are wonderful. Dogs love to be exposed to new environments, to sniff along the way, to just explore and see new places just as much as we do. So hiking is a lot of fun. Nose work is kind of what I, that's kind of like the game I just described with our hound mix radar is giving your dog something to go find by sniffing it out. You can also have fun hiding little treats around your house, underneath pillows, underneath rugs, behind a chair, and see if your dog can go and find those. It's really entertaining to watch these games too. Rough play, some dogs like to wrestle or to play tug of war. Some, some breeds and some dogs really love that kind of play. And you can even get down on the floor and gently wrestle with your dog and have some fun. And then finally, swimming is wonderful whole body exercise. It's especially gentle on the joints and beneficial, especially for dogs suffering with obesity. So this is just a sampling. There's so many other activities you can do and have a lot of fun with your dog. And note that some breeds are predisposed to neurodegenerative diseases and some dogs already have some musculoskeletal trauma from an accident or trauma. And it's especially important to build a customized exercise protocol for those dogs. So they need exercise just as much as any other dog but it's something you want to discuss with your veterinarian to make sure that the protocol is safe and sustainable for your dog's special needs. Okay, so now we're moving into circadian rhythm. Remembering back to that question we asked at the beginning, what is natural for dogs? So waking up with humans, doing a job all day with humans, and going to bed when humans go to bed is what's natural. For dogs because they chose to come out and live with us they chose to be domesticated a healthy circadian rhythm is really important for dogs hormone production and health the effects of junk light which is blue light from screens and artificial lighting in our homes and no light which would be curtains and shades drawn during the day are both not beneficial to dogs whatsoever bright lights at night, like screen time activates melatonin, which is the sleep hormone, and it makes sleep more difficult for dogs and it disrupts their circadian rhythm. So it disrupts kind of like the, the downwinding cycle that they need in order to have a healthy night's sleep. And incidentally, it does the same thing for humans. And then staying indoors with dim light, so not getting exposure to natural sunlight during the day can again misalign the day night circadian rhythm it can promote anxiety and depression in dogs and it reduces their alertness so you kind of have a mopey sad dog that has to wait in a dark house all day what can you do so in the morning open all your blinds and shades and curtains even if you're going to work and leaving for the day open them for your dog so that your house is filled with natural light take your dog for a 10 minute walk in order to get natural sunlight exposure which helps the dog to make the appropriate neurochemicals to wake up you can also take him for a sniffing walk where he just has a mental opportunity to sniff as much as he likes and just take in the world and start his day going out for a morning sniff is like a cup of coffee for a dog so 
uh, let him wake up, let him become interested in the world and excited by his day. And, and this takes 10 minutes, so it, it doesn't have to take a lot out of your morning. And then avoid dimming the lighting during the day. So keeping everything open, keeping everything bright. Don't close your dog off into a dark room during the day. Let him be exposed to that natural sunlight. And you can even leave toys or activities during the day for your dog uh, to enjoy. So that's a, a time when you could hide treats in different places. You could bring out one of the brain game toys. You can bring out a toy that's not always uh, in his presence. So it's a special toy that you bring out when you leave for work. Things like that can help to pass the time. And then in the evening, you want to reduce blue light exposure. And again, this is the same for people. So they make blue light blocking glasses for people. They do not, to my knowledge, have those for dogs yet. So the best thing is just to set a time when you turn off the TV, turn off your computer, turn off your phone, and limit exposure to that blue light. You can read, you can do other activities, you can take a bath, you can hang out with your dog, but just setting a time uh, close to sunset when you're going to turn off all that artificial light. You can also take your dog for another 10 minute walk in order to expose him to the red light of the setting sun. So that's the opposite of the blue light that our screens stimulate us with. Red light stimulates the production of mel melatonin, which helps us to fall asleep, and blue light makes us wake up in the morning. So the dusk light is really great for dogs and it's a really peaceful time to take them out for a little walk. And again, let him sniff and do what he pleases. It's not so much about exercise as it is about him winding down and realizing it's the end of the day. And then you can dim the lights and quiet your house for the night. So minimizing chronic emotional stress is really important for your dog's health. And chronic emotional stress can look like spending too much time alone or in isolation, uh, having no job or purpose, having no structure to their life, having no playtime, and having nothing to stimulate their brain. So basically, uh, life void of stimulation and purpose and interest can cause your dog to feel depressed and to lead to some chronic emotional stress. So social engagement and stimulation is really important for your dog. Does he have dog friends? How many does he have? How do they get along? How does he like to engage or play with other dogs? And how often does he have an opportunity to do so? You can also work on communication skills. So one-on-one -on -one with yourself, teaching and treating and training your dog. So he's saying, you know, teach me to be the dog you want me to do. I can do a variety of different jobs for you. That is what gives your dog a sense of purpose and contentment and satisfaction in his life. So even teaching him tricks and asking him to perform those tricks and rewarding him is just a great stimulation for your dog and makes him feel like he has a purpose and is contributing to your life, which is so important to him. You can also stimulate his brain with the brain games, puzzles, hiding toys, having him find you, moving things around. You can move your furniture around during the day uh, for him to discover and hide toys or treats behind it. There's all sorts of fun things you can do to get his brain stimulated and woken up. And then play more. Allow your dog more playtime. Dogs are really playful creatures, and they're up for pretty much any game you can invent. And he's just waiting on you. So I noticed that with Chipper, I knew he was feeling better when I started to see sides of his personality come out that I didn't even know existed. So as he started to feel better following the diet changes and the supplements, he would suddenly pick up sticks in the yard and try to play keep away with them. And he's an older dog. I had no idea he was so playful. He would watch me throw the ball for um, our other two dogs, and I thought he was I thought he was too tired to play ball. So he would stay outside the fence. I would be in the fenced backyard throwing the ball. And he started barking at me one day, and he wanted in. So I let him in, and 
he was trying to play ball with the other dogs. He ran, he sometimes couldn't find the ball, but he dove for it and played just as rough as they did. And he was having such a great time. So I realized that a big part of health and purpose is letting your dog have opportunity to play whatever that looks like. So in, in, in addition to play, you need ongoing lifelong relationship-based training with your dog. So you are probably the most important in your dog's life. And it's up to you to introduce new experiences to your dog in a safe way. So taking baby steps, introducing things in little tiny increments so your dog can handle it. This builds trust. It builds trust in you. And it helps you to learn to read your dog's body language. So you can tell when he's getting anxious or upset or nervous about something before he feels like he needs to act on it. If you own a dog, you're a dog trainer by default. So you're responsible for growing two elements, his confidence and his trust in you. Stress and fear are roadblocks to learning. Your dog cannot learn if he's stressed out or he's scared. So deepening your dog's trust in you can help them to get through tough situations. And don't ever punish your dog when he panics, right? So that's not trust and confidence building. That's making him feel more fearful. So relationship-based training, you can find trainers in your area who use positive reinforcement or have relationship-based training, and you can enroll in classes. There's so many books and resources and YouTube videos to learn how to engage with your dog and teach them new things and have really healthy, happy relationship uh, based training. So cultivate a rich social life for your dog. Dog parks are terrible for under socialized and shy dogs. Create one on one relationships with puppies and dogs that your dog really likes. Identify a handful of other dogs with a similar temperament and arrange for play dates with them. Never forget that you are probably the most important companion in your dog's life. So it's up to you to make sure that his stress levels are down, that he has purpose, that he has a healthy circadian rhythm, that he gets plenty of breed appropriate exercise, and that he has you in his life. And that's your job. So in conclusion, your dog needs a bare bones minimum of 20 minutes of exercise three days a week. Brain exercises are just as important as physical exercises. In addition to exercise outings, your dog should have two 10 minute circadian rhythm setting outings, little sniff sessions in the morning and in the evening. And you can minimize chronic emotional stress by providing ongoing social engagement, mental stimulation, and dog-centric activities that your dog loves.